What is up guys, Pie Muffin here, and we are back with our Tales of the Rays video. Although we're in the game, I'm not actually really going to be doing much with the game. We're really just here to kind of talk about the state of the game, in a good way, there's nothing bad with the game, and the future. I've mentioned this in quite a few videos, and I, I mentioned that I kind of wanted to make a separate video on this. But we're going to be talking about two things here. We're going to be talking about what is the... Uh, future of the game gonna look like after last cradle ends which should be you know probably at the end of this year i would guess um so let's just talk about that first and then we'll talk about uh the other thing i want to talk about is when tales of arise characters could possibly uh be put into the game so let's first talk about the story so we are currently in pretty much the halfway point of the fourth arc which is going to be the final tale of Ix and Melina. Um, they pretty much said that, that the climax of the story they've been telling for the last four years will be ending here. But if you did watch my previous video where I break down uh, Producer's Letter 51, which it's kind of crazy because they only do a Producer's Letter every month of the game to kind of talk about the state of the game, what they're working on. So there have been 51 of those. They mention that they want players to have some kind of relief to not worry about this game going anywhere. Because usually, you know, as we saw with Tales of Link, when the main story with Tales of Link ended, they just shut down the game. I mean, it didn't happen immediately. It wasn't like Final Chapter came out, game shut down. You know, it was, it was several months after. But once they told the story they wanted to tell with Tales of Link, they were like, you know what? You know, the game isn't making as much money as it used to. You know, players seem to have kind of had their fill. I think this is kind of time to end things, which is kind of nice that Rays exist because the Tales of Link characters get to have their own kind of adventures in this world. Um, but they're going to take a different approach when it comes to Rays because you, you really look at Tales of the Rays and regardless of what your favorite gacha game is, you know, what your preferences are, in terms of actually emulating how the main series plays, Rays is the best gacha game out there. Like, you look at all the other gacha games to try to emulate the gameplay from uh their normal games like nothing comes close to raise nothing comes close to how much effort the developers put in into making full move sets to characters that didn't previously have full move sets or weren't playable in their normal games nothing comes close to touching raise regardless of how my feelings are when i get very unlucky it is the best gotcha game out there in terms of gameplay um but let's talk about the story so arc one Starting it started back in, I believe it was like 2017, uh, for the Japanese version. And it had so it had 13 chapters, and then it had two kind of like epilogue things. So we had to, so this is technically chapter 14, even, even though there wasn't a number. And then this final part right here was chapter 15. Second arc, 2018. Um it had a total of it, it was actually kind of shorter. Beard's Prison was a little bit shorter, it only had 12 parts. Or 12 chapters. Arc 3, which was in 2019, for the most part, had a total of 17 chapters. And it wasn't like one of those short ending ones either. It had a, the final chapter did have a full 15 parts. So that was the longest one. Because uh, the first two arcs really only lasted for about a year. But the third arc lasted for a year and some change. Uh, so you can see that was 17 parts right there. Now we're in the fourth arc. Well, actually, the not really 17, but it was like final chapter part one, final chapter part two. And then now we are in part seven of the fourth arc, and it is only the beginning of May. So we're going to get chapter eight before May ends. Now, if they only plan to have 15 parts, because in the producer's letter, they did kind of imply that by the end of 2021, that the story would be concluded and that they're going to have new developments starting after, you know, the fifth anniversary, which will be next February, like the end of next February. So February 2022 will be the uh, fifth anniversary. And then when that ends, uh, you know, even either with the anniversary or after, we'll probably see the next uh, arc. Now, it's hard to really like I say arc, but we don't know what that means. They've stated that this is the climax, I've already said this, but they've stated that this is the climax of the regular Tales of the Ray story. So the story of Ix, Melina, Cocos, Caria, Mercuria, etc., etc. Their story is going to end with this uh, arc. 
So whether it has 15 parts, 17 parts, which... If there's no off months, because last year because of COVID, there were a lot of months where we had no story chapter because they had to put it off. It probably would have only been one year of story if they hadn't had to put anything off. But obviously stuff got put back because they couldn't, you know, work the normal way that they used to. But, so if we have seven more months after this to basically finish it off, that means it, that would leave us at 14 chapters. So it might not be finished by 2021 unless they really just plan to have this done by then. Now here's the thing with this. In terms of actual story content, for those of you who pay attention to the story, obviously we can't read Japanese, so we're pretty much going on visuals, and I go off of, you know, what my friends tell me who can read Japanese. Uh, we haven't seen... In the opening, we get this scene of Artorius fighting Velvet, uh, Laffy Set, Saray, and Mikleo. We haven't seen Artorius get into action anywhere, and even on the main screen, we know Heldolph is also part of this story and we haven't even seen held off once like i don't even think he's been on screen in any of these chapters so that really just kind of tells me that either they're just gonna jump in the game really late you know like maybe like chapter 10 plus you know they're gonna show up and that's when stuff's really gonna hit the fan or that this arc is gonna be longer than they originally anticipated but they do still seem to have a timetable of wanting to finish this arc this year um so it will be interesting to see what they kind of do with that. So now let's talk about what does that mean for the next story they would want to tell. All they really said was new development will start uh, next year. Uh, well, actually, new development pretty much from winter onward. So pretty much December onward, uh, new development. So what that tells me is the game's probably going to get a huge, for one, UI overhaul. Because uh, they're going to want, if they're going to start a brand new story with new characters... Uh, they're probably going to want the game to feel fresh. So I could definitely see a huge UI overhaul. Kind of like we, we've we been getting, you know, every kind of like other year. You know, we got a UI overhaul when Mirage Prison started. And then uh, we got a UI overhaul to an extent when Fairy's Requiem started. From Fairy's Requiem to Last Cradle, we haven't really gotten much of a UI overhaul. Stuff is pretty much everywhere where it, it's been. Uh, obviously, in the producer's letter said they're going to be overhauling events. Uh, starting, uh, you know, around like the fall, summer fall time. So we don't know what that's going to entail, how events are really going to change. Uh, they do want to make it easier for new players to kind of get started because if you really think about it, Tales of the Race is a very hard game to get started in, despite how free to play friendly it is because you don't necessarily need all these, you know, amazing mirage arts as flashy and awesome as they are to see and, you know, how nice as they are to have. They aren't absolutely necessary because the core part of the game is not using the mirror jars, it's using your other weapons. So as long as you can get a full set of four weapons for a character, you can pretty much use them. Uh, so uh, I know that they're they're planning to kind of revamp the beginner stuff so that it kind of helps players to know what to really summon for when they get started if they're just trying to build out full color teams. Because unlike a lot of other gacha games, this isn't really a game, besides rainbow events, because each event is separated by color for the most part, like the current event we have right now, the Abyss event, you want you can only use yellow characters. Even if you don't really plan to use um, Abyss characters specifically, like let's say you don't have many Abyss characters, I'm not going to hop into the stage, but I'm just showing for the uh, example here. You know, my Abyss team gets a two times multiplier bonus, but if I went to a different color, you know, like this, look, it's only 36,000 power for my blue team because they are not the right color. So this game heavily relies on you having the correct colors to uh, kind of do these sorts of things. And even here, I don't need to have specific Abyss teams. You know, as you can see, Cress and Vague are not Abyss characters, but... Uh, Vague is yellow, and then Cress uh, is yellow as well. So you can kind of mix and match with that. And that's another thing I kind of... They said they're going to revamp how events work and how you get currency. So I'm hoping that means that they'll make it a little bit better to get currency. Like, for example, if we have an Abyss exclusive event, let us just use any Abyss characters we want and get the higher currency. Because the higher currency for this event are these flowers you see, and the lower currency when you're using characters that are not 
uh, the four for this banner, you just get the smaller currency, which is still fine because you can exchange it. But uh, I would like to see, you know, if I do an Abyss event, just let me use any four Abyss characters I want uh, and get that bonus. But that's a whole nother thing. So there is going to be some major overhauls probably with the fifth anniversary. I expect the game will be a much different uh, look or will have a much different look once we actually get there. But, you know, that's still like nine months away. So we have quite a while uh, to wait for that. Now, let me talk about the other thing I wanted to talk about. Tales of Arise. So the big question I get all the time on Twitter and in comments and stuff, uh, will the Tales of Arise characters come to Tales of the Race? And the answer is yes, and they pretty much confirmed it in today's producer's letter. Um, I say today, I don't know when this video is coming out, but the, when I made that producer's letter video, that was today. But the question is when, because they did hint at it. They were saying, you know, th they'd like to, you know, keep going as long as possible, so... Uh, once it's been enough time, they'd love to include the Tales of Arise characters, as well as they make a joke about Cruel. Uh, I, I think I'm saying Cru Cruel, Creel, uh, however you're supposed to say it. Um, but uh, the question is when. Now, the thing is, Tales of the Rays is the most spoilerific game of all the, D the Tales games. If you look at, and I'm going to be going into spoiler territory, so uh, if I click on a character you are not finished the game with, uh, you might want to skip ahead or click off. But um, pretty much most of the regular mirage arts for characters, and even like the decisive mirage arts and overrays, uh, tend to be pretty spoilery. Um, so let's take a look for one. This is a huge spoiler. I'm obviously not going to say why, but it is. Um, I would say this one isn't as much of a spoiler, even though this is Kyle's regular mirror art. Um, I feel like as time has gone on, they've been more spoilery with the stuff that have come out. Um, let me talk about the games I've actually finished, and uh, maybe some of the ones that people will have definitely played. So let's talk. Let's talk about Symphonia. Uh, so. Let's go into spoiler territory here. This is when Kratos and Lloyd fight uh, towards the end of the game. Um, you know, obviously huge spoiler there. This is Lloyd versus Mythos. Huge spoiler there. Um, I think you're kind of getting the point, but, you know, I'll show a couple more. The thing is, whenever the Arise characters get Mirage Arts... They are going to be from spoilery scenes, most likely. I mean, it's not even that they're intentionally being spoilery. They want them to be iconic scenes. Uh, when you're summoning for these, you're you're basically, you know, yes, the arts are cool. But for the most part, you're summoning for this artwork. That's what you're summoning for. Um, because you get the characters for free. So whatever big scenes, Alfin, Gion, Law, or Ro, however you want to call him, uh, Rinwell... Whatever their big scenes in the game are going to be, that's the artwork their regular mirror arts are going to have. So that's why, you know, September 10th is when Tales of Arise comes out. But September 15th is not going to be when we're going to see a Tales of Arise banner. We're not even going to see it in October or November, most likely. I would say December at the very earliest would be when we'd see a Tales of Arise banner. Because they want to give players time to play. And I'm sure all three gotcha games are going to do the exact same thing. Uh, Crestoria is debatable, but... You know, assuming it's still doing well. Um, I think Asteria, Rays, and Crestoria will all have Tales of Arise banners probably around this December or January. And, uh, you know, they obviously want to promote the game, but they also don't want to spoil their fans. Because, you know, not, maybe not everyone's going to be able to play Tales of Arise Day 1 uh, that does play the mobile game. So they do want to be at least a little bit fair on how they kind of handle things. Um... So that's pretty much where my thoughts are on that. I think December and January would be the earliest. We would see Tales of Rise, and it would probably just be Alpha and Geon. We'd probably get them in an event. Uh, we'd probably get seasonals for some other characters that would come with them. Whatever color they're going to be. That's the other thing. We don't know what color they're going to be. Let's talk about that for a second, too. Um, a lot of people I've seen say green would be the best color. So let's look. Red doesn't... Red has what? Okay, so let's see. That's... 
8, 16, 24, 32, uh, 39 for red. Well, actually, let's not even go about... Let's just go about games. Let's count how many games are part of each color. So we've got... What is this color? This is... Uh, okay, this is red. So... We have Heart. We have Destiny. We have Destiny 2. And we have Link. Is that all of them? Yep. So that's four. I'm not counting... You see Cress and... Uh, Vague at the top there, but they're not actually part of this. It's just their spirit gear that gives them that color, too. So that's four games for red. All right. Blue has Zillia. It has Legendia. It has Zillia, too, obviously. Um, And it has Tales of the World. So that's four there again as well. We have yellow, which is what? That's Abyss, uh, Rebirth, Legendia. Uh, oh, Fantasia. Yep, Abyss, Rebirth, Legendia, and Fantasia. Okay, so that's four again right there. So we're pretty even across the board right now. All right, let's see, green. Um... So that's Vesperia, that's Eternia, that's uh, Tempest, and that's it. So yeah, green is probably the color they're going to go with for Arise. Um, even though they have a ton of characters here, it's just because Ves <coughs> Excuse me. Vesperia's gotten so much love over the years that uh, in this game that they just have a ton. So that's only three for green. Purple is Symphonia, Graces, um, Symphonia 2, um, and that's it. So, okay, so we could, we could also go with Purple. Purple also only has three. Okay, Brown is Asteria, Berseria, uh, Innocence. What else? It's just those three, right? Yep, that's also three. So they could go with brown as well. And in terms of character numbers, all three of the colors we've mentioned have roughly the same characters. Let me see. What is that? That's four rows and one. Okay, so that's only three rows. You know what? Brown probably has the least, surprisingly. Okay, so I think brown or green are the top candidates because purple still has a decent amount. So brown or brown or green are probably going to be one of the two colors that Arise gets uh, thrown into, which will definitely be interesting. Um, but yeah, so that that's pretty much uh, what I want to say on the Arise stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess it, just to kind of put people at ease, the game's not going anywhere. Whatever they decide to do, whether we get a whole new story, whether we just get like sub stories with the characters that already exist in this world. They have reassured us that the game is not going anywhere anytime soon. They want to keep adding characters. They want to keep developing the game, making it more fun. And honestly, I feel like when Raze is said and done, you know, when they're finally just like, you know what, we've added everything we want to add. I think we're good. I do think that they will at least for the mobile game, keep an offline mode where maybe we can use the characters in like these throwaway quest just to like play as them you know maybe it'll unlock every art for every character that's come out and let players who have the game downloaded just be able to play the game i that's not obviously not a confirmation but i i just don't see them throwing away you know all these which by the time the game is done we'll have way more than this but we have 200 plus char playable characters in tales of the rays uh even if you don't count the collab characters which are in here um, we still have over 200 playable Tales characters, all with unique movesets. And we even have, like, we have Schwan as his own separate character that's not just Raven. Like, that's insanity. Um, so I do think this game will have a very long lifespan. I, I'm going to say at least double what we're at right now. So I want to say at least eight years, uh, I think this game will be around. 
um, because of how they're kind of talking about their roadmap for the future. They already have a roadmap laid out up to the six-year anniversary. So they already know what they want to do pretty much for the next two years of the game. So that is very reassuring. And, uh, you know, eventually we're going to start to see second seasonals. Like, I, I guarantee, you know, some characters already have more than one seasonal, you know, like Melina and stuff. <coughs> but I think it will eventually come to a time where characters like Yuri, Mila, uh, etc. will start to see second regular seasonals. Um, because even though there's a ton of characters that don't have seasonals, eventually you run out of story ideas for events. So they are going to have to give characters second seasonals at some point. So that'll bring even more life into the game. And if you already have those characters geared out, you won't have to summon for those seasonals. Um, huh? Although for That's Yuri, that? Yuri has every mirror jar in the game besides the collab mirror jar. Um, which I think the only one I'm missing... Yeah, I'm only missing his... Well, no, he doesn't have a dual mirror jar, which I'm sure they're going to do Yuri and Flynn. Um, I'm almost certain they'll probably do that sooner or later. Um, but yeah, so he still needs a dual mirror jar and a, and a uh, collab mirror jar, but he has an overay. I just don't have it personally because he already has a spirit gear. Unfortunately, I don't have any uh, other five stars for him besides his regular one, so I really need to get copies of those at some point. But, uh... Yeah, I think second season will, def will definitely happen at some point. Anyways, let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know what you think is going to happen after the fourth arc comes to an end. Uh, do you think we're going to get a brand new set of main characters and they'll do a little bit of a time skip? Because I don't expect that they're going to re-exoflect all these characters if they make new characters. Because it's like, we already had, you know, the whole first arc was about, you know, meeting all the Tales characters. And some of the second arc, and, you know, we've still been meeting them as time goes on. But the main focus of, like, the first half of the first arc was just like, okay, who's the character we're going to meet this time? But, um, I don't think that they'll redo that. I think if they do introduce new main characters, uh, you know, all these characters we see here will already still be existing in this world. But that's going to be it, guys. Like I said, let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know what you think about the Tales of Arise stuff as well. Let me know when you think the Tales of Arise characters will be implemented into the game. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, new event starts on Friday uh, for the Tales of Rebirth event, which I have, like, nothing to summon for. But I'll throw whatever two or three multis I can at it before it goes away. Uh, if there's a paid step up, I might consider doing it because I just really need stuff for uh, the Rebirth characters. Um... Because I don't have any mirror arts for Mao or T-Tray. Um, but I do have Eugene's regular mirror arts, so that might be uh, useful. I don't think I clicked on everything. Yeah, so I definitely want to get Mao and uh, T-Tray a little bit powered up. But that's going to be it, guys. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe more if you're new to the channel. I'll see you all next time. Have a wonderful day, everyone.